Vampires and video games have crossed paths plenty of times over the years, but in 1991, a small game company called Microsmith took it to a whole other level with Drax Night Out. This is the first and only time a Dracula game was sponsored by Reebok. Hey, D, D Brown, what are you doing here in New York? Purchasing my new dunk in my new shoes. Reebok Omnizone. Reebok Omnizone? Yeah, very lightweight, which is key for this jam. Oh, yeah? Which jam? The King Kong jam. That's right. Reebok sponsored this game. The subtitle is even The Game That Pumps You Up, and Dracula can even be seen on the cover wearing the trademark shoes. From what I understand though, Parker Brothers, who was going to publish the game at the time, strongly pressed the Reebok sponsorship onto the developers of Microsmith. Now, according to one of the co-creators of the game, Mark Lesser, this was the big reason the game never saw release. So the whole objective of the game is to get from the top of your castle to the ground floor. From there, navigate through the town to find Mina, Dracula's main squeeze. <laughs> First thing I notice is the wild color palette for this game. It's full of wild colors, a lot of them kind of clashing, and it's so offensive to the eyes that it makes you feel like a vampire burning in the sunlight. Even though the colors are a little harsh, I do like the design of the game sprites for all of the characters. Dracula in particular kind of puts me in mind of Al Lewis who played Grandpa Monster. Anyways, as you go down the floors, you'll come across these levers that allow you to unleash a trap or a ghoul to attack the villagers in your castle. Some unleash monsters, while others throw axes, spring giant boxing gloves, all unloading a jigsaw level of violence on the villagers, leaving bodies around for you to consume their blood. Now, I suggest sucking up as much blood as possible so that you can level up and take on the form of a bat. In your bat form, you can fly right through people, taking them out with one hit, and it gets you through the floors a lot quicker. I find it kind of weird that I can clearly see the Frankenstein monster a few floors below me, and he's not being harassed by any of the angry mob. Stupid racists. Once you hit the ground floor, you can now take the carriage into town. So once you're in the village, you have to navigate through the streets to find your way to Mina. So at first I discovered that you can go into some houses once you have obtained a key from a helpless villager. Once you get into a house, you might be met with a Reebok shoe power-up which allows you to run a bit faster of course, or it might be an old man who will remind you that you're very very far from reaching your goal. So that's a whole lot of helpful right there. But sometimes you run into these old men who offer to show you on your map some cafes or some bridges or some thing in town that's close to Mina's location. By the way, this is a news to me that you even have a map. So the map pops up and oh my god, look at that. The map of the town is Pan's Labyrinth. It is huge! This is an NES game. You have a limited amount of time to find this lady and this is your map? Seriously? Now there are clear indications where exactly these cafes or these bridges or these places are that are close to Mina's location. But there's hundreds of houses and streets are just going in every direction. Even if I could find where these cafes and bridges were on my map, I can only access the map when I'm talking to these old guys. But even if I wanted to find these old guys, I don't know necessarily which house they are in and I then have to use up my keys going house to house trying to find them. Now some houses will have ladies inside that Dracula can influence to guide them into uh, Mina's direction but it only takes you so far and still it's nowhere near close enough. Some houses have trap doors that provide a shortcut through a pitfall hell. It's not worth it to go through here as you can see with everything from arrows to fireballs and boulders, everything flying at you, it's not worth it at all. Like the bat power up in the castle, you can turn into a wolf in the village after killing enough people. Now in wolf form you will be able to run across town way quicker, and that is useful, but I got thinking wouldn't it be way more useful to be able to track Mina by scent since you are a wolf after all? I mean, due to the size and complexity of the map after all, that would be much more useful. Another thing is that I keep running into villagers and getting killed. 
But it's because when you cross the town, Dracula gets really close to the edge, forcing the screen to shift to the next section of the map, which then respawns a group of villagers right in front of me. This is only worsened by wearing the Reebok shoes, which makes you run to the edge really fast, and then BAM! You're hit with villagers! But at the same time, you want to get through the town faster because you're on a time limit. So the shoes should be useful, right? But it just slows things down when you keep getting killed. I have tried probably a dozen times, and I can't make it to Mina. So here you go. I'm going to just show you the ending that some other guy filmed. So thank you very much. Overall, I think it was a pretty interesting game. I definitely enjoyed the castle portion more, and I wish there was more of that to play through. The castle stage and the town stage have a completely different feel, and it seems like two completely different Dracula games. I personally would have preferred it if the whole game was set in the castle, just cutting down villagers with an arsenal of acme props. It really sucks that this game didn't come through as planned, and I think that it would have been really fun to see in its final form. But the Reebok plug really didn't do anything but give this game a quick, swift kick right into the can. Thank <laughs> you.